Hi, I'm Sophie Grace, and welcome or welcome back for Chapter 10 of Christy's Great Idea, the first book in the Babysitter's Club by Anne M. Martin. If you haven't seen the previous chapters, I've just posted them, and we'll be posting a chapter a day for the next few days. So, get comfortable, get a snack, and let's begin. Chapter 10, Saturday, September 27th. I don't know what Christy always makes such a fuss about. Watson's kids are cute. Karen is five and Andrew is three. I think Christy would like them if she ever babysat for them. Are you reading this, Christy? I hope so. Well, Christy said this is a notebook for us to write our experience and our problems in, especially our problems, and there were a few problems. At Watson's house, when I said Andrew and Karen were cute, I mean, they were cute looking. They were cute acting too, most of the time, but sometimes Karen was a pill. That was one problem. Another problem was Boo Boo, the cat. The biggest problem was Mrs. Porter, the next door neighbor. Anyone else who babysits for Andrew and Karen should know about Boo Boo and Mrs. Porter ahead of time. Watson picked up Marianne at 8.45 Saturday morning and drove her to his house. He lives all the way across Stony Brook, so it's hard to get to his place by bike. According to Marianne, Watson was very nice to her in the car, which was to be expected. He always makes an extra effort to be nice to me since he knows I don't like having him around, so of course he would be nice to my best friend. Marianne said that Watson lives in a very pretty, very big house. I guess he has a lot of money. He'd have to, the way he throws it around, buying Chinese food left and right, and taking my mom out on dates almost every night. Anyway, the house is large, Karen and Andrew have neat rooms and toys. Marianne had never seen so many gigantic stuffed animals, dolls, a train that you could really ride around the backyard. Cars, bikes, a playhouse, costumes to dress up in. It was incredible. Kind of like being in a Toys R Us. Watson turned out to not only be a very good father, but a very organized customer. The first thing he did was introduce Marianne to Andrew and Karen, whose mother had just brought them over. Then he showed her their rooms, took her back downstairs, showed her where all the stuff was for making lunch, and finally pinned up a list of phone numbers she might need. And then he brought out Boo Boo. From what Marianne told me, Boo Boo must have been a Boo Boo. What a mess of a cat. He was gray with big yellow eyes that were kind of handsome, but he was fat. He looked like a pillow with legs attached. When he stood up, his stomach touched the ground, and when he tried to run, it swayed back and forth. He was gross. He weighs 17 pounds, Karen said proudly. We think he belongs in the Guinness Book of World Records, remarked Watson. Marianne couldn't figure out why Watson was showing Boo Boo to her. Okay, he was really fat. So what? He certainly didn't need to be fed. Watson cleared his throat and adjusted his glasses. There are a few things you should know about Boo Boo, he said. Now, Marianne is not the bravest person in the world, and she said that right when she began to feel just the teeniest bit afraid. She put her finger in her mouth and started biting at the nail. The first thing, said Watson, is that Boo Boo bites if provoked and scratches. He's an attack cat, added Karen. It's best if you just steer clear of him, Watson went on. I'd offer to confine him while I'm gone, but he does not like that very much. He gnawed the laundry room door all up, said Karen. Just try to ignore him. Marianne nodded. Whatever you do, don't touch him, added Watson. Marianne nodded again. Well, I guess that's it. Any questions? No, not really. Lunch is at 12.30, right? Said Marianne. Right, said Watson. What about Mrs. Porter, Daddy? asked Karen. Oh, I think she's on vacation, replied Watson. No need to worry about her. He turned to Marianne. Mrs. Porter is an elderly woman who lives next door. She's a bit on the eccentric side, and Karen is convinced she's a witch. She isn't, of course, but she doesn't like animals, and Boo Boo seems to have gotten on her bad side. We try to keep the two of them apart. Okay, I'm off, kids. Watson kissed Andrew and Karen goodbye. I'll be home at 1.30, he told Marianne. Marianne was just wondering how to entertain her charges when Karen began to talk. It turned out she was a non-stop chatter. We're divorced, she announced. Yep, said Andrew. Our parents live in different houses. Yep, said Andrew. He sat down in a little wagon. Our mommy is going to get married again. Yep, said Andrew, pushing himself around the playroom. Then we'll have one mommy and two daddies. Yep, said Andrew. He backed into a bookcase. And if our daddy gets married again, then we'll have many mommies and daddies. Won't we, Andrew? Yep. Marianne giggled. Come on, guys. It's a sunny day. Let's play outside, okay? 
Oh, great, exclaimed Karen. I have a new doll. Daddy brought her for me. She hasn't been out in the sun very much yet. I think she should get a tan, do you? Dolls can tan, you know, of course. They're real anyway. They can do whatever people do. They can draw and break dance. And Marianne was beginning to feel a bit dizzy. Want to play outside, Andrew? Yep. Marianne took the two kids into Watson's big backyard. Andrew brought the wagon and pushed Boo Boo around in it. Is he allowed to do that? Marianne asked Karen. Your father said not to touch Boo Boo. Oh, he meant you shouldn't touch Boo Boo. You're a stranger, but Boo Boo knows us. He wouldn't hurt us. Karen paused for a breath and went on. You see that house, the one next door? Marianne peered over Watson's rose gardens and between the trees. Next door was a sprawling mansion with gables and turrets. The paint was peeling on one side of the shutter was crooked. Marianne said later it looked dark and scary. Yes, she said to Karen. That's where the witch lives. Right, Andrew? Andrew plowed the wagon into a tree and Boo Boo leaped out. Yep, it's Mrs. Porter and she's an honest and truly witch. Mrs. Porter isn't her witch name though. Her witch name is Morbida Destiny. The big kids on the street told me so and she eats toads and casts spells and flies to witch meetings on her broomstick every midnight. Marianne stared at the house, nibbling away at her nails again. She wasn't sure what to tell Karen. If she told her the stories weren't true, she probably wouldn't get off a good start being a babysitter. If she agreed with Karen, she'd practically be lying to her. At last, she asked, do you believe in stories about more Miss Porter? Karen nodded. I have proof. You do? Yep. The proof is Boo Boo. Mrs. Porter made him fat. One day, Boo Boo was nice and skinny. He went into Mrs. Porter's garden and dug up some of her flowers. Mrs. Porter came out and yelled at him and threw a fit. The next day, he started getting fat. Yep, said Andrew. So now we have to keep Boo Boo away from Mrs. Porter's house. We don't want her to cast another spell on him. Making him fat wasn't so bad, but she might actually do something really, really mean. Well, said Marianne, we don't have to worry about that today since Mrs. Porter's not home. And it was the exact second Marianne saw a window shade snap up on the first floor of Mrs. Porter's house. A wrinkled face with big nose pressed itself against the panes of the glass. Karen saw the face too. Karen screamed. That's Morbida Destiny. She's home after all. Where's Boo Boo? Where's Boo Boo? Marianne began to feel afraid again. She knew there was no such thing as witches. Were there? But the face at the window didn't look very friendly and Andrew was crying and Karen was panicking. All right, Marianne tried to remain calm. She thought about what Watson had told her that Mrs. Porter was just an eccentric old lady. Let's look for Boo Boo, you guys, she said. We don't have to, wailed Karen. I see him. He's, Karen gulped. She pointed her finger. He's in Morbida Destiny's garden. Well, I'll just go get him, somehow, said Marianne, remembering that she wasn't supposed to touch Boo Boo, let alone pick him up. She's already gone from the window, Karen cried. She's coming to the door. I know it. Okay, okay, Karen, you're in charge of Andrew for a few minutes. You stay in the yard with him and watch him. I'll be right back. Marianne said her heart was pounding as she crossed Watson's yard and stood at the edge of Mrs. Porter's property. Boo Boo was about 10 feet away from her in the middle of some chrysanthemums digging away happily. Boo Boo, Marianne called softly. She glanced at the house, no sign of Mrs. Porter. Maybe she hadn't seen Boo Boo. Boo Boo, Marianne called again. Come here, she snapped her fingers. <coughs> Boo Boo didn't even look up. Yoo-hoo, Boo Boo. She stepped closer. Boo Boo sat down and scratched himself. Boo Boo, hey, fat cat. Boo Boo, hey, fat cat, called a croaky voice. Marianne's heart just about stopped beating. She whirled around, and as she was whirling, she could hear Karen shrieking in Watson's yard. Behind Marianne stood a witch. Honest to goodness, she told me later, she looked just like a witch from a picture book. Mrs. Porter, or Morbida Destiny, or whoever she was, was dressed in black from head to toe. Her hair was gray and frazzly, and there was a wart on the end of her nose. She was carrying what Marianne first mistook for a broom, but which turned out to be a rake. That fat cat, said Miss Porter, shaking the rake with every word. It's digging up my mums. I know, I know, I am so sorry. I'm trying to get him out for you. Marianne decided to forget Watson's word. 
She stepped right into the garden and reached for Boo-Boo. Boo-Boo hissed and swiped at her with his paw. Claws extended. Mary Ann jumped back. That does it, girly, said Mrs. Porter. She jumped into the garden and waved the rake at Boo-Boo. Boo-Boo's eyes opened wide. He leaped over a bush of the golden mums and streaked away. Luckily, he streaked back into Watson's yard. Mrs. Porter shook her rake after him. Rap scallion, she cried. She headed over for her house. Marianne could hear her muttering things like children and pets. Darn nuisance. Back at Watson Yard, Karen greeted Marianne tearfully. Did you hear that? It was a curse. What was? Rapscallion? Marianne asked, looking nervously over her shoulder at the chrysanthemum bed. Yeah, no, that wasn't a curse. That's a real word. She was calling Boo Boo a name, but she did not put a spell on him. Are you sure? Positive. Right, Andrew? Yep. I don't know, said Karen. I don't know. Look, Marianne went on. Do you see more Mrs. Porter mixing her herbs or looking for bat's feet? No. Did you see her crushing toadstools or stirring things in a cauldron? No. Then how do you know she cast a spell? Asked Marianne triumphantly. She's a witch. She can do anything she... Hey, Karen shrieked, pointing. Marianne's stomach flip-flopped. She immediately looked over to Miss Porter Yard. Sure, she was going to see the old woman flapping across the yard in her funny black dress, but Mrs. Porter wasn't in sight. Karen was pointing at Boo-Boo. Look at that, she cried. He's going crazy. Boo-Boo did, in fact, look a little crazy, Marianne said later. As she watched, the cat ran partly across Watson's backyard and came to an abrupt stop, ran around in a circle, then dashed off in the direction he had just come from and scrambled up a tree. Oh, said Marianne nervously. He's just being a cat. Cats do silly things like that all the time. Marianne had never owned a cat, so she had very little experience with them. But she had once seen the Pike's cat, Sarge, wake up from a sound sleep, leap off the couch, jump up on the television set, and immediately fall asleep again. Still, Ubu doesn't do silly things, said Karen, edging towards Marianne. He's too fat and old. Marianne took Karen and Andrew by their hands. The three of them stood and watched Boo-Boo. For a while, he looked as if he might go to sleep right up in the tree. Karen grew bored. Psst, she whispered after a moment. We're bit of destiny's at her window again. She's looking over here. Sure enough, the old face was pressed against the window panes. Morbida raised her right hand to her nose, and Boo-Boo sat straight up, slipped, slid, and finally fell out of the tree, landed on his feet, and shot past Marianne and the kids, hissing all the way. Oh, no, wailed Karen. Marianne squeezed her hand. Boo-Boo tore up the steps at the back porch and waited at the door. I guess it would be a good idea to let him in said Marianne. At least we won't have to worry about Mrs. Porter's garden anymore. So Marianne opened the door and Boo-Boo ran inside. He ran straight into the laundry room, jumped into the laundry basket, and stayed there while Marianne and Karen and Andrew ate lunch. Every time Marianne checked on him, he peered through the sides of the basket and yowled. Marianne started to tell Karen it was all just a big coincidence, but then she didn't know how to explain the meaning of coincidence, so she just gave up. Daddy, it's a spell, Karen told Watson urgently as soon as he came home. Watson laughed. Don't be silly. There's no such thing as spells. But by then, even Marianne wasn't so sure. She was very relieved to go home. Thank you so much for listening to Chapter 10 of Christie's Great Idea, and come back tomorrow for Chapter 11. Bye!